canvas and pet stitching. Yay! Welcome everyone to the third part of my bearded Sherlock project. Today we will make the biggest and most labor intensive part of the outfit, the Inverness cape. But first, dramatic intro. Before we get into it, let me say thank you. Thanks to Ricardo, Andrew, Anthony, Daniel, Dagmar, Bibliomani and several others who want to remain anonymous for buying me one or several coffees. So this YouTube channel is currently something I do just for fun on top of my full-time job. And while I don't actually drink coffee, I do run on caffeine. So thanks for your support. And if you want to buy me a coffee too, there is a link in the video description for this. Now, onwards! Well then, let's start with some research. I deliberately call it Inverness Cape and not Inverness Coat because I intend to make it without sleeves. A famous person once said, sleeves are the devil's work, and I agree. I also intend to wear it above several other layers and since we're using this cozy Harris tweet here, you might already know from the Deerstalker video, I would die a pretty sweaty death. So no sleeves. The starting point of my research was this Sherlock Holmes statue located in Edinburgh. The cape part here is very long and there is no lapel. Two things I also want for my Inverness cape. The statue is sporting a high, high collar, a fluffy tie and a tie pin, things I will keep in mind for the final ensemble for myself. And you can see that he is actually wearing a double-breasted suit underneath, whereas I will probably aim for a three-piece. Now this is another nice version. The placket is not concealed and the cape is very full. I will try to incorporate this. I don't know how full I want the lower coat part to be, but let's make a mock-up. So this is my first attempt at the cape part. It's basically a full circle with a radius of 70 centimeters and a neck hole. Now I tucked away a centimeter at the top and a couple of centimeters here at the bottom and now it falls in a straight line. Excuse the ugly color of the mock-up here, it's an old bed sheet. Anyway, I decided to divide and conquer this project. First I will do the collar, then the cape part to attach the collar to the cape, um, then I will do the coat part underneath and finally I will try to attach the cape to the coat part and well, I don't know yet if this is a good idea. Wish me luck. Now comes the best part. I can show you how to make a jacket collar, including canvas and pet stitching. Yay! So this is the collar or this will be the color of the cape. But what have I done here? Nicholas, what have you done? Well, so I cut out canvas and the outer fabric with my color pattern, which is this one. I basically constructed this um, on Rupert. Rupert is my mannequin, by the way, um, by with trial and error. So you can already see this line here, which is this on the actual fabrics. So why this line? This is the roll line, which means this will become the edge uh, on which the collar is turned down, like this. Like this. Now what will I do next? I will press this line, like this. I will press this and then to make a three-dimensional object out of these two two-dimensional layers, I will pet stitch the collar, which means um, bringing it in form and then connect those two layers. OK, 
Okay, perfect. So I finished the pet stitching on the lower part here. Uh, it goes this way and is supposed to work in uh, the roll here. And as you can already see, um, it doesn't stay flat anymore, which is great. And now the second part is um, working in the roll of the collar here. So we make our way from center back here to the front of the collar going this way with the stitches. Let's go! Now as you can see I have finished the pet stitching. Um, it curves already quite nice, the collar. What I will do now is um, cut off the seam allowance, but just for the just for the canvas. Uh, then I will use my uh, my steam iron to well, give it a more shape more shape, so it fits better to the to the neck. For example, here in the back, uh, the outer part needs a bit more a bit more length. Well, and then I can cover it with another layer of outer fabric, which will also uh, steam in place a bit. And after that we will come to the cape part. Now, while I do have enough tweed for the Inverness cape, I do not have enough lining. So I will probably fully line the cape part because this is quite important I guess. And for the rest I will, I don't know, piece a bit and then I also have this uh, bias tape. So maybe I will just partially line the Inverness cape. Hello, hello! Now the cape is finished, well more or less, the collar is just um, attached to the, the cape with besting thread and a few pins. You know what, just let me put it on real quick. As you can see I put a hook and eye here, so if I now mess up the coat part I can at least wear the cape for itself. Well, um, I lined the full circle cape with this lovely fabric um, and I can also wear the collar Count Dracula style. For now it's okay. It's not perfect but you know who is. Let's move on to the coat part. After hours and hours of hand stitching that I did not completely film, I'm almost finished. Ta-da! Let's take a closer look. First, what is missing? Well, I still need to do the buttonholes here. Since I don't have enough lining fabric, I just lined the upper half of the coat and now there are two spots missing here in the front where you can see the canvas. And I also need to hand stitch the bias tape here. The front turned out nice and forms some kind of lapel when you unbutton it. 
The collar turned out pretty good and I'm quite proud of the whole top stitching, which makes the edges crisp and is almost invisible on the outside. I also got the vent in the back right. Maybe I will do a separate video where I will show you how to make a vent. It's no rocket science, trust me. Thus concludes this video. I'm sorry I'm not showing you me inside the cape, but I want to save this special moment. I will make a final video to show you the whole outfit and I'm thinking about a short film, but really short, just a couple of minutes. In return, I want to do it right. Like my video about confidence, at a great location, loaded with Sherlock Holmes references, including drone shots and all this stuff. Cool? Cool. Subscribe to stay tuned on this and see you then.